Always great to be here at ASA. This is probably my 39th year as a part of this association, and it's my favorite of all. So a few years ago, I'm not a real wild football uh, buff, but I was at a, a conference, and I happened to sit next at dinner to one of the other speakers, Joe Montana, the great quarterback. And I said to him, I said, Joe, so I, I couldn't think of what to say. I said, Joe, so what's the secret of being great at what you do, being a great quarterback? And he said, Ken, it's really simple. You have to throw the ball to where the receiver is going to be. If you throw the ball to where the receiver used to be, or you throw the ball to where you are, you might look great on camera, but you'll get no points on the board. So the whole trick is to try to figure out where the receiver is going to be, and that's where you aim. So do I know the future of retirement? Uh, of course I don't. Uh, but I have been thinking about this quite a lot for the past 40 years, and we've been doing quite a lot of research on this subject. And what I'm going to try to do during my 45 minutes here is to weave together five themes and to try to share with you what this might look like. Everybody ready for that? Yeah. All right, great. So there are five conver converging forces, and to me, they all kind of stitch together. Uh, let me break them into pieces. First, as you've heard many times, we are in the midst of a longevity revolution. Throughout history, humans have been searching for fountains of youth. There have been all these theories and ideas for how to uh, rid the body of its impurities, from the alchemists to folks who believe that if you took baths with virgins, then you would never get old. And I think that's still practiced in Washington. I don't know if it's, a <laughs> I don't know if it's working, but... Um, it was the beginning of the 20th century and the arrival of public health departments that changed the future of retirement and the field of aging. The emergence of antibiotics. Uh, how many of you know what this is a picture of? Right, iron lungs. If I went to the high schools in your communities, I guarantee you not one person would have any idea what these are. Thanks to the Salk vaccine that came along and took this disease and rendered it a thing of the past. Oh. And the 20th century was filled with extraordinary breakthroughs in the way we managed and distributed food. The breakthrough in refrigeration, which came out of a nerve gas from World War I, amazingly was used to apply to the ability to keep foods fresh in our own homes. Watch The Honeymooners, if you ever want, with Jackie Gleason. He had no refrigerator. It was an ice box, and there was an ice man in the 1940s that would come to your house and deliver ice from time to time. Uh, a uh, extraordinary suite of pharmacologic substances, a better uh, understanding of how we care for our own bodies and each other. And out of all of these miraculous breakthroughs uh, came an alteration in our life expectancy. This is a chart of the past 1,000 years, and what you see is that up until the 20th century, by and large, most people didn't age, they died. So in the 1850s, couples didn't say, gee, honey, what would you like to do in retirement because you'd be dead. Our medical system didn't need to be expert at things like hypercholesterolemia, osteoarthritis, adult onset diabetes, or dementia, because people were inclined to die young before they got old enough to have the diseases of aging. Uh, the length of time it takes for the traffic lights to change was geared to the swift movement patterns of young people. The chairs you're sitting on were designed for the backs of young people. I'm sure you've already noticed that. The auditory range in our public address systems and our phones are geared to the ears of the young. And even our notion of who we are in life was sculpted to match a world in which living to 50 or 60 or 65 was considered that's what life is. Uh, the time beyond was rare. I'm going to click this device and show you the average life expectation worldwide over the past 100,000 years. And here the story gets for me quite majestic, because medical anthropologists now tell us that throughout 99% of all the years that humans have walked this earth, the average life expectation at birth uh, was under 18. And so we see that throughout all of history, there have always been 40 and 60 and 80 year olds, but not very many. But because of these breakthroughs in medicine, we now have a horizon in front of us that humans have never contemplated before. And so everything we do in this field is being done, in a sense, at the very front end of an evolutionary path that's been going on for 100,000 years and is now beginning to alter everything in the world, including retirement. Two-thirds of all the people who have ever lived past 65 in the entire history of the world are alive today. 
So when people say, well, what's the future? The future, is it high tech? Is it you know, robots? Is it, yeah, some people believe that. I think this is a picture of the future. When this uh, picture appeared in, in the New York Times, I was taken by it because the gal in the blue dress, Sarah Knau, she was 118. Sitting across from her was her daughter, Kitty. She was a mere 95. Standing up in the back was her uh, young grandson, Bob. He was just 73. Next to Bob was the great-granddaughter, Kathy. She's 49. Down on the lower right is the great-great-granddaughter, Christina. She's 27. And little Bradley made up the sixth generation of the Knaus family. This is the most extraordinary thing that's ever happened. I believe the longevity revolution in its own way and how it affects the family, and how it causes people to think about living a long life, and how it changes the relationship between generations, and what it forces to have happen in the medical field, and what it makes us think about in our communities, will have a greater impact at the end of the day on all the dimensions of our lives than either the industrial or technological revolutions of previous centuries. The longevity revolution is non-trivial. It changes everything.